there. Those are, those are significant pieces that we're seeing that are superheated. Let's listen to James Hartsfield in Houston for a minute, shall we? No communications or tracking data was received uh, from Columbia since that time. Search and rescue forces have been alerted in the north central Texas vicinity and eastern Texas. Any persons in those areas reporting a debris should avoid any debris that uh, may be associated with the space shuttle's contingency as it may be hazardous and toxic due to the toxic nature of propellants that are used on board the shuttle. Any such debris that is located should also be reported as quickly as possible to local law enforcement agencies. Again, a space shuttle contingency has been declared in mission control. Flight controllers here securing all information and data pertinent to today's descent by the Space Shuttle Columbia. James Hartsfield. The last communications from which were received at approximately 8 a.m. Central Time. James this Hartsfield, is control, who is sitting in one of those consoles there in uh, Mission Control. You can't see him right now. But what you're seeing is uh, a group of people who are uh, got to be a fair amount of shock, astonishment, and, and deep sadness in that room right now. But uh, as is their job, they must now continue the process and begin what is the early stages of an investigation into what went wrong. Let's look one more time. I wanted to show you that last picture we see from our viewer, just to give you a sense. I've been showing you progression shots. If we go back to SP-103, please. Uh, I can show you, um, and it's zoomed in, uh, and you can see down here, uh, let's give you the, a sense of, uh, the, there's a spot there, spot there, spot there, I, three, I don't know, four, five, six distinct um, targets there, if you will. That's a bit of a euphemism. Um, in any case, that is the, the, the final remnants of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Uh, let's re remind you of the crew and uh, tell, you, tell you who was there. Um, the commander, Rick Husband, um, he um, was flying his second shuttle mission, his first as a commander, colonel in the United States Air Force. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is uh, the stuff of boyhood dreams. Rick Husband always wanted to do what he was doing at that moment we just told you about. Born in uh, July of 1957. Willie McCool, shuttle pilot, selected by NASA in 1996, gone through the training, uh, and uh, this was his first mission, commander in the United States Navy. Kaplana Chawla, this is, was her uh, second mission. STS 87 was her first back in 1997. Uh, she was born in India and uh, is a U.S. citizen. Like to, like to do aerobatics and tailwheel airplanes, among other things. Ph.D. David Brown, up next. David Brown, born in 1956 in April. Also his first flight, a captain in the United States Navy. He was a mission specialist, which means he wasn't in the front two seats uh, flying but has, uh, to his credit, uh, 2,700 flight hours, 1,700 in high-performance uh, military aircraft, uh, and uh, his parents reside in Virginia. Michael Anderson, on his uh, second flight, STS-89 was his first back in January of 98. He visited the Mir space station at that time, and uh, he selected by NASA in 1994, mission specialist, born December of 59 a uh, lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force. Laurel Clark, also a mission specialist. This was a busy scientific mission. They used a thing called the double space hab module, a couple of school bus size, about the size of a school bus scientific lab. She was very involved in this as a, a medical doctor and a commander in the United States uh, Navy, <clears throat> hailed, fr hailed from Iowa. Uh, was flying her first flight. Fair amount of rookies on this particular one. And then the one that captured a lot of our attention and liftoff in particular, especially because of the concerns for security, Ilan Ramon, a colonel in the Israeli Air Force, 
who um, had a very, very decorated career as an F-16 fighter, including a raid in the mid-80s on an Iraqi nuclear reactor, which was taken out by the Israeli Air Force. That was never publicly, officially confirmed, but we got that from sources that he was one of the people who took out that nuclear facility in Iraq. He became the first Israeli to fly in space, 3,000 hours of flight time in A4s and F-16s and the like. There you see the full crew in uh, their suits, and I'll just point out something about these suits. They, they're called uh, launch and reentry suits, pumpkin suits, they call them. I guess it's obvious why they call them that. Um, they are full pressure suits. Uh, they put those helmets on when they come in, and those pressure suits um, are designed to allow them uh, to withstand a sudden decompression, la lock, loss of oxygen or uh, uh, pressure inside the um, crew module, which is kind of a almost a self-contained module inside uh, the space shuttle. All right. We uh, have another witness. I'm just going to finish my thought here. It, it, it is um, perhaps not widely known that there's no way for the crew to eject from the space shuttle. Um, first couple of missions, uh, there were ejection seats for the pilot and co-pilot. They could have punched out, literally exploding right through the kind of the roof, uh, if need be. Um, but it, it was not determined, not practical, to come up with an ejection system that worked for seven people, and uh, thus. A lot of it was, had to do with weight and money, quite frankly. Uh, there was never an ejection system that was uh, designed or built into the space shuttle. Crew trained for some um, evacuation bailout procedures. Uh, but as we heard from Kyle Herring of NASA just a little while ago, 200,000 feet Mach 6, uh, there's, there was nothing uh, any crew member could do in that situation in order to get away from the vehicle. Now, we have a witness from uh, near pa Susie Vagu, is that correct? Vagu? Susie uh, is on the line. She uh, saw and heard something. She's joining us from Central Texas. Susie, go ahead. Yes, hi. I'm in Huntington, Texas, All right. in Angelina County. All right. Well, can you tell me what you saw and what you heard. Uh, approximately 9 o'clock this morning, we heard a tremendous um, rumbling sound. And um, w the dogs immediately, we have, we, live on, we have a horse ranch and raise horses, and the dogs went nuts. One of my guys was in the barn, and one of our horses literally jumped at him. Um, the, the play, we had a tremendous fog, and one of the guys that worked for me just came up to me and informed me that he feels that there's some rubber burning in our pasture, and he just went to go check. Um, listening to the scanner, we understand that all in Moffitt and San Augustine County, Nacogdoches, and um, Angelina County, that there's debris. Also on the scanner, probably at about 9.15 before, well, right before CNN was announcing what, in fact, it was, um, the scanners were saying for the sheriff to go ahead and if you, that it could have been the space shuttle. If you found anything, it was federal to seal it off, not let anybody touch it, don't contaminate it, don't get near it. Well, those are words to the wise, aren't they? Uh, what else have you heard on those scanners? Any sort of um, indications of people actually encountering debris? Um, well, we're hearing that there's a whole bunch of debris in Moffitt County, also in Jasper, we've heard. Um, my, actually, let me, put, let me put the guy that works for me on the phone, and uh, he just heard a whole bunch of stuff. Um, hello? Uh, hello, Benjamin Laster. Go ahead. I believe we have another witness on the line. I'm sorry uh, to the previous uh, person. I, I wasn't able to hear the last part of that. Uh, Benjamin Laster, what did you see in here? Uh, well, uh, uh, the barn and stuff, we was feeding the horses and stuff in the barn. And uh, the barn started shaking all of a sudden and stuff like that. And I'm riding through the pasture. If this go back out there, and I smell some rubber, you know, what smells like rubber burning. But we're going. I'm fixing to go find out and just see if there's anything laying around and stuff. Because they're saying not touch nothing or stuff like that. So I don't know if I'm going to have anything or not. But here, here's my boss. You can talk to her. Yeah, I'm all sorry right. to do that. I, he 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 was, you know, up here and telling me all kinds of stuff. Hello. Who do we just hear from, please? Um, Lynn. What's your last name? <laughs> That's what I thought. Lynn Hearn. Okay, I apologize. I was a little confused. I didn't know you handed the phone over. Somebody was yakking at me in my ear. I apologize for that. Yeah. Um, okay, so he smells uh, burning rubber. He hasn't gone out to investigate. Just He's yet. going out right now. I had him stand by in case um, he knew of something. Yeah. Okay. And um, now you're just 
you're, you're not a, a member of the authorities. You're a, you're a scanner listener, correct? Correct. Okay. We, we, we were woken up by this rumble. Right. We, today we were trying to sleep in on Saturday, and we heard this um, sounded like a train going through our property. We have 240 acres, and it sounded like it was in, you know, the driveway. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what's next in that part of the world? Do you have any sense we're of any... We're in East Texas. Um, we're um, kind of in between Houston no, and Dallas. No, no, no. Dallas. What, what I'm trying to get a sense of what's going on right now. Are you getting a sense that there's any sort of search or rescue effort underway at the Yes, moment? yes, there's a tremendous um, effort underway. Um, all the counties on the scanner, you can hear them. Um, haven't they're finding debris from all over the place from yeah, I, I wonder if you could put your phone up to one of those scanners for us and keep us uh, is there a way you could do that for us um, you can hear it I'm trying to get here yeah are they talking about it right now now they're they're not it's um, not 